Hi guys, today's video is an introduction into internal control. So the objective today is to understand why organizations need internal control, outline the components of internal control, and to outline the limitations on having internal control. So um, first we're going to do why, uh, so we understand why we need internal control. So firstly, what is it? Internal control is a system of accounting procedures and processes that are designed by management and implemented by an organization's personnel to achieve the objectives of promoting reliable financial reporting. And for example, that would be in order for us to uh, record accurate and reliable data entry. The objective to, of ensuring compliance with all, regula all regulations, for example, accounting standards. And management, management policy. So they must all be followed. And then lastly, it's to promote effective and efficient operations. So we're trying to stamp out any fraud or any loss of assets by inefficient use and wastage, okay? So those are our three objectives for internal control and that's what internal control does. So it promotes reliable financial reporting, ensures compliance with all our regulations that we need and also promotes effective and efficient operations. So internal control is an entire system that dictates how accounting data should be recognized, recorded and presented. It's not just one particular act, for example, of um, having physical uh, control of our cash, like put it into a safe, rather it di dictates how we operate our whole company and um, all the activities that are performed will be performed in a way that um, promotes internal control over these objectives. Okay, so why would we need it? We need it to ensure our objectives are reached and as a result, if we didn't have these um, internal controls, so without reliable financial reporting, our financial statements are unreliable and um, they don't reflect our financial position and performance. It becomes hard for our users to um, determine if they're right or wrong. They become misguided and as a result, we have a poor public in, um, image. It looks like our firm isn't honest and um, it, it just reduces our, the, our market value and things like that. So um, next we go compliance with laws and regulations. So if we don't have compliance with uh, laws and regulations and as a result we don't have internal control without it, uh, we can get heavy fines or other disciplinary actions. Um, it also contribute to unreliable financial reporting if we're um, not steering, if we're steering clear of accounting standards, the financial reporting won't be, um, it won't comply with everyone, like everyone else's financial statements. So it will be um, misguiding our users and um, accounting standards would determine how our assets, liabilities, shareholders equity, revenue and expenses are measured and recorded and if we don't use these accounting standards of course um, we can have bogus numbers and manipulated data. And then lastly it provides effective and efficient operations so that's why we need it and um, if we didn't have it uh, resources are wasted or lost to fraud and it causing unusually higher expenses and losses to us. So the components of internal control, um, it's firstly to have a control environment. So management structures op operations in a way that promotes integrity and ethics. So we, um, we do something that is morally right. And d disciplinary measures are used to incentivize compliance with our objectives of um, internal control. And those are to reliable financial reporting, compliance with laws and regulations, and effective and efficient operations. Okay, our next one is uh, risk assessment. So we identify and an analyze relevant risks that compromise resources and operations. For example, if our firewalls and things like that, um, like our computer hardware, if that is very vulnerable to attack and being manipulated by um, people from outside the organization, we might need to identify the risk of that and um, then have provisions that try to stop this risk. So for example, having um, better better passwords and things like that in control. So next, it's 
information and communication, which is uh, one of the most important. So personnel must be clear that internal control measures must be complied with, and there must be an effective channel to communicate information readily, either internally or externally. So if something, uh, if someone knows that um, someone is doing the wrong thing, they must have a clear channel for them to communicate um, to people that are higher up, like their supervisors. Um, next is monitoring. So we use regular management and supervisory activities and external auditing to maintain the quality of our internal control. Um, and that helps us make sure that our financial position, financial performance and everything in our financial um, statements are, are recorded so that they don't misguide users. And then lastly, any vulnerabilities in the system are to be reported um, to our supervisors and things like that. And then lastly, these are the control activities. So they are, they're the policies and procedures that set that make up internal control and that are internal control. They're, they're set by management and make, and yeah, so they dictate our operations. For example, we do have things like um, top level reviews to make sure our financial statements are up to date and they aren't manipulated or anything. Um, we have information processing. So make sure the information or all the information is processed properly and not just certain types of information. Then we have, uh, we need to separate things like separating record keeping and, and cash handling. That's, that's when a lot of fraud can happen. So when, free, uh, when people uh, mess up or manipulate the records in order for them to take away cash and record it as an expense or something like that. And then lastly, it's also another control activity, is to physically protect our assets. So we might have locks and safes to protect our cash. And then uh, lastly, we're going to go to objective number three. It's to list the limitations or problems with the internal control. So... Um, Internal control is, uh, well, deals with people and personnel. So inherently, there's um, problems with human judgment. So humans make mistakes too. And um, through misunderstandings or clerical errors, like recording errors, and that as a result, that can affect internal control. Um, so management can override effective internal control activities if there isn't a clear um, communication channel. They don't know what they're doing right or wrong. And as a result, they might cut, um, cut something because... Uh, it's more expensive or they don't know how well it's working. Uh, collusion, so people collude together and they, they, they just, yeah, so they, um, they, sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so collusion is pretty much people teaming up together um, to, res to make an objective. So for example, um, people can team up together to do a fraudulent act and as a, as a result, because uh, only they know about it, it's really hard for, um, the company to know that that is happening unless someone unless someone blabs their mouth or they find out. And then lastly, supervising and monitoring activities are actually very expensive and we need to weigh up the cost and benefits. So if the cost of extra supervising and monitoring is much more, it's much greater than the benefit of actually having internal control over something, then uh, we might need to uh, put that on the back burner and not use that because it's it might be overly expensive and we just can't afford it. Okay, so um, thanks for sticking around today, guys. I hope you learned something. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.